Today we get a story time of this emo kid who thinks that he's like legitimately a god, like he has godlike powers and can put spells on people, and the people must cower in fear before him and do exactly what he says because he thinks he's legitimately a god. I'm not even kidding. Strap in, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber who sent in this story, let's call him Drew. So this all happened one day when Drew and his mom decided to get uh, dinner with uh, his cousin and his cousin's mom, because it had been a long time since Drew and his mom had seen his cousin and his cousin's mom, and at this point, right, you know, you know, they just want to have a little bit of a reunion. It had actually been so long that it had probably been about three to four years since Drew has seen his cousin, and, you know, while they're driving over there, because they're driving to some kind of, like, local restaurant or whatever, because Drew's cousin and his Drew's cousin's mom were happened to be in the area for some reason, uh, Drew's mom was like, hey, Drew, by the way, I just want to let you know that your cousin, he's going through a little bit of a phase and you know drew's like what do you mean and she's like oh he's kind of going through like a little emo phase right now so uh be nice to him he's kind of he's being extra emotional nowadays by the way i've seen a lot of people in my comments say that they kind of dress emo or whatever dude i literally don't care do what you want to do uh, uh, like i uh, you, you got my love and respect either way as long as you don't act like this kid then we're cool but anyways right his mom's like yeah he's kind of going through a bit of an emo phase right now and drew was like all right like that's cool whatever i'll like not be mean to him about that uh and uh, yeah, well, uh, Drew's mom did not say that he was also going through his Greek god arc or whatever, dude. Like, it's the funniest thing ever. But anyways, so they sit down, and Drew and his mom are looking in, and Drew sees Drew's cousin's mom, and she's like, oh my god, how's it going? Wait, Drew's cousin's mom would be his... Drew's mom's sister. Okay, that's much easier. So Drew's mom sees Drew's mom sees her sister, and it's like, oh my god, it's been so long. How's it going? They run up and they like hug each other. At this point, right, Drew is kind of curious to see what his cousin is looking like, and uh, yeah, sure enough, right, uh, you know, he looks over and uh, Drew's uh, cousin is like full, like super long, dark black hair has a dark has like a black hoodie from Hop Topic has like black socks and has like a spiky chain thing dog collar thing and has like long like black painted nails and has a like a, a little like a uh, in you know in his mouth like he has like a lip ring or something and he's like he comes up and he's kind of like shrugged over hands in pockets is like what's up and uh, Drew's like, hey, man, how's it going? Last time, like, he was in his Minecraft arc, so completely different, man. So Drew was a little taken aback. But anyways, they all decide to go and sit down, and they're just talking about stuff. And it seems super normal at first, but here's the first interaction that Drew kind of realized was the beginning of, wow, this is going to be a lot weirder than I ever expected. Drew's cousin, like the emo kid, and I'm just going to call him the emo kid, just realized the emo kid and Drew's cousin are the same person from here on out. So anyways, right, the emo kid is sitting there, and the first kind of really weird thing he says is, is he refers to Drew right, as a mere mortal. Like, it was like a totally normal conversation, and I think like the emo kid was like, looks at Drew and he says, how is a mere mortal like you faring in like school? And Drew was like, okay, that's like kind of funny. Drew thought he was just trolling. He thought he was joking around. Drew really thought that like the emo kid had a pretty good sense of humor and you know, Drew was all for it. He thought it was pretty funny. So Drew kind of responded as normal. But the thing was that was kind of weird and which kind of like, it, this was kind of the thing that made Drew think, oh my God, like, wait, this is actually something is when the emo kid's mom, his aunt, I don't know why in the beginning I kept saying Drew's cousin's mom, his aunt. I'm kind of an idiot. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, right, his aunt made this face, like a bit of a grimace, but also a smile. And Drew's like, why is she acting so weird? Like, the, the kid made a joke about me being a mere mortal. Little did Drew know the emo kid was in his god era or whatever, right? So, I mean, he, he did, he meant it, bro. He legitimately meant that he was a mere mortal. But anyways, right, you know, weird things just kept going on like that. Because all of a sudden, right, you know, the emo kid was like, yeah, like when I was at school, it's going well for me because since, you know, and he looks at them when he says, you know, and has a bit of a smirk and Drew in his head is like, yeah, I don't know, but he doesn't question any further. The emo kid's like, yeah, because, you know, all my friends are, you know, they're, they're bowing down because, you know, they don't want to, they, they don't want to deal with my wrath, which I totally understand. And Drew's kind of just like in his head, like, all right, like the 
I, I can't tell if this is a joke or not. If it's a joke, this bit of satire is pretty funny. But if it's not a joke, oh my God, like this is not going to be, <laughs> this is super weird. But anyways, right. And he looks at Drew's cousin or hit the emo kid's cousin's mom again. And she's grimacing again. And Drew in his head is like, wait a minute, something's off here. So the emo kid is like, I gotta go to the bathroom. He stands up and he like sonic dashes away or just like does the sonic dash away. And like, th the thing is right, Drew didn't notice this before, but he has like a black cloak. Like the dude has a Superman cape, but it's like all black and like emo and whatever. And Drew's just like, okay, this guy's a bit of a, he's a bit of an oddball, but at least he's a good guy. That turned out to be very incorrect, but anyways, right, Drew is just like, all right, man went to the bathroom, like, I guess it's just gonna be my mom, my aunt and I talking, and the aunt, her face was like a forced smile for the entire conversation until Drew left, and her face completely dropped, and she's like, guys, I'm so sorry, like, I gotta let you know something, and they were all just like, uh, what are you, what are you talking about, and she was like, guys, like, I don't know how to explain this, but I guess the, the best way I can explain this is that, you know, your cousin and looks at Drew is like, Drew, your cousin, he's, uh, you know, he's in his God arc right now. And Drew's like, huh? What is a God arc? <laughs> he's like, huh? Well, what do you mean a God arc? Like, what does that even mean, bro? And she's like, uh, yeah. So basically he thinks that he's a legitimate God and that his friends bow down because they know that he can smite them and put spells on him. And, you know, he's been in his emo phase for a while, but it's evolved into an emo God phase. And Drew is just like looking at her like, wait, is the emo kid and my aunt, are they both on the same comedy bit? Is this like a sketch or something? And he left to make it seem more believable. Because if that's the case, bravo, they're getting five star rating from me. But if this is legit and it's seeming like it's legit, oh my God, I'm actually going to like flip out, dude. This is the craziest thing ever. And, and then the, his aunt goes on to say, and you know, he's very fragile emotionally or whatever. So if you guys can just please please play along if he, like, makes a mention that he's a god. Please don't burst his bubble. Like, uh, like I, I, I know it's a lot to ask, and it's super weird, but please, just do it for me. He's gonna get through this phase and be normal soon, I hope. <laughs> she has a long pause and then says, I hope, and, like, you know, Drew's mom kind of cringes a little bit. She's like, oh my god. Like, thank god Drew is not like this and not in his god arc. Drew's mom wouldn't care if Drew was, like, emo or something, but if he was an emo god phase, like, she would be like, bruh, like, my son, why? Why do I live? <laughs> just to suffer. And that's when Drew sees the emo kid slash his cousin return from the bathroom. And you guys might be thinking, oh, he's not too bad, right? In his little god arc, because all he's saying is like his friends are mortals or whatever. No, it is about to get 1000 times worse. It's something about the bathroom just turned him into like super evil vengeous god mode. Like it is about to get so so bad, so strap in and prepare yourself. Real quick, comment emo down below if you want a heart on your comment. I'm gonna try and heart as many of those comments as I possibly can because emo is the secret word of the day. And by the way, the channel's actually been doing really well because you guys have been binge watching the videos. And I, I tell you, best way to support the channel is to watch a bunch of my videos in the row and then comment about it. And you guys have been going like really above and beyond. Like here's just some people on screen who've been like legitimately watching like a ton of videos and like legitimately watching me letting me know just so you guys know this is the best way to support me and it's actually really shown and it, it's crazy and i just want to say thank you so let me know if you're binge watching these videos in the comments i'll try and heart them i'll try and respond or something and just know i really do appreciate it and uh yeah thank you for the watch time uh, the channel's going kaboom and it's all because of you guys anyways back to the story so the emo kid comes back and he sits down and when he sits down he wraps his cape around him like he's dracula or whatever and, uh, you know, uh, Drew's mom slash the emo kids, uh, or Drew's aunt slash the emo kids mom, right? It's like, hi, Drew, welcome back. And Drew, I don't know what happened to him in the bathroom, but he's like, he responds, he, he turns his head, he looks at his mom, and he says, silence, mortal, do not speak to a god like me. And all of a sudden, everyone at the table goes silent. And even the table next to them goes silent and they were in the middle of a conversation. Like everyone like in the in the five mile like vicinity or five foot vicinity was like paused and was just like, what did I just hear? 
And, you know, the emo kid's mom gets, like, very, like, eh, nervous. And she's very thankful that, like, she was able to tell, uh, you know, Drew and his mom, like, what's going on. But she was like, oh, my liege, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. And the emo kid is like, fine, I'll consider it. Your punishment will be less than uh, because of your uh, re repents. Re repents, is that the word? Yes. Because you're, forg you're slightly forgiven, but your punishment will still happen. And he, like, whips up his cape again and, like, hides his face behind it. It's like, meh, 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 meh. At this point, Red is like, oh, my God, my cousin's gone off the deep end, bro. What? So anyways, right, the emo kid's mom starts having a conversation with Drew's mom, kind of just trying to, like, move past that super awkward moment of his, of, like, her son saying, silence, mortal, you will be punished, like, something just very strange like that, and uh, she just tries to have a normal conversation, and she was doing pretty successfully, as the emo kid was, like, evilly staring at them, like, uh, like, through his black mascara, looking at them, and, like, it, like, I don't know, like, Drew, like, looked at his cousin, and, like, briefly, very briefly, Drew just kind of, Drew looked at his cousin, and the emo kid looks at him, makes eye contact, and goes, Hiss! and Drew's just thinking to himself, what? What did I do? I looked at you, like, why are you so much less normal right now? Because uh, the emo kid was, kind of weird before as he was calling people his mortals but for some reason he just went off the deep end by the time he came back anyways right the uh the waiter comes around and brings their food and things are looking pretty good because like i don't know drew's like all right i don't need to interact with my uh, cousin anymore he's kind of weird i can just focus on my food and he can focus on his food and then we can just get out of here life is good and that was just unfortunately not the case because when the food came down, the emo kid is like, all right, because he, he speaks for the first time since calling his mom a mere mortal and that she's going to be punished. And he says, all right, time for the sacrifices. And his mom is kind of like, oh boy. And Drew is just thinking in his head, eh, like what's going on here? And uh, sure enough, the emo kid's mom is like, oh yes, my lord. And she takes, like, half of her food and scrapes it onto his plate. He's like, hmm, all right, who else? And Drew kind of is just so confused right now. He's just like, uh, am I supposed to give this kid some, some of my food? Bro, Drew was hungry. He didn't have lunch that day. He was, like, tired. He, the food he got was really good. He's not trying to give this weirdo emo kid who thinks he's a god half of his food. That's just not what he's trying to do today, man. This is not what he's trying to do. And the emo kid is like, Drew, you will be punished if you don't give me half of your food. And Drew in his head is like, what? <sighs> No, well, I'm not, like, I'm just not doing that. Like, at the end of the day, I hate to say it. Well, actually, I don't hate to say it. I love to say it. I relish in the fact that I'm saying it. I'm not giving him half my food. That's crazy. And, you know, Drew is just kind of looking around, and he makes eye contact with the emo kid's mom slash his aunt, and his aunt just gives him a death stare, like, do it, do it. My son needs you to do it. And so Drew's like, fine, whatever. And Drew, like, takes about a third of his food and puts it on the emo kid's plate and he's so angry he has to do this in the first place and the emo kid looks at him and it says peasant this is not a half of your food this is only a third and drew in his mind is like wait he's gonna actually nitpick me on this he's i, I gave him basically half my food yeah i actually gave him like a third it it it's same thing right and the emo kid is like, you will be smited if you don't give me half of your food. And Drew is just thinking to himself, my God, what is wrong with my cousin? And uh, Drew's mom's like, all right, honey, here you go. And scrapes off half of her food into the emo kid's plate. And he's like, nya, 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 nya. does this like weird, like cringe laugh or whatever. And Drew's just like, you know what? This fine. Uh, it's a Drew scrapes the rest of his food or the other half or at least up to half of his food onto his plate. And he's thinking, whatever, like, I'm going to be hungry. I'll just grab food at home. I'm just trying to get out of this very weird meal. And the emo kid is like, smart move, peasant, smart move. You will not be smited now. And the emo kid starts like, he eats like literally one bite on his plate and it is done. He just doesn't eat the rest of it. And Drew is just, like, so angry at this point for everything that's happened, but now the emo kid demanded all of this food from everyone at the table, and he doesn't even eat any of it. So eventually, right, the waiter comes around and is like, oh, are you done? And points to everyone else who has finished their food because they're all very hungry with empty plates. 
And he points to the emo kid. He's like, oh, do you want me to box that up? And the emo kid says, no, I'm done, and hands him the plate. And Drew in his head is like, what? What? You didn't even eat it. Why? So Drew really just wants to get out of there. He's not trying to deal with this nonsense anymore. But the emo kid, like, the, the waiter comes around and says, hey, guys, do you want any dessert? And the emo kid is like, yes, I, I demand it. And the waiter's like, uh, okay, I'll get the menus. And Drew in his head is just thinking to himself, bro, I'm trying to get out of here, this weirdo, but, like, I'm just trying to get away from the weirdo, right? But he demands the food, so I guess I'll get some ice cream, whatever, as long as he doesn't take all my ice cream or something. And so sure enough, they get the dessert menus, and they all order their ice cream, and, uh, the thing is, right, the parents don't end up ordering any of the ice cream, so it's just Drew and the emo kid that both get, like, three scoops of whatever flavor they like. And so sure enough, right, it is very quiet and awkward. Even the parents at this point have given up trying to make the situation less awkward, and they're just dead silent. And the whole table is dead silent. And it's just so weird and strange. And Drew just wants to go home, and he doesn't want to be here. But finally, right, a little light at the end of the tunnel, the ice cream comes, and Drew's already prepared that he probably has to give the emo kid half of his ice cream. He's like, whatever, man, like, this dinner sucks. I never want to see this guy again if he's in his god arc or whatever, right? I'm not trying to see this kid anymore, but fine if this gets me home. And at least I'll have half a bowl of ice cream. One and a half scoops is pretty good. Um, I'll take it, whatever. It's not three, but I'll take one and a half. So the ice cream comes and the waiter puts the stuff down and says, enjoy guys. And so Drew is getting ready to, to divide his ice cream in half. And the emo kid is like, all right, peasant, give me all your ice cream. And Drew looks at, looks at him and is like, all, all of it. Drew's like, oh, I thought you wanted half. He's like, no, for dessert, I deserve it all. Or you will be smited. Do you want to be smited, peasant? And Drew looks at him and he has that like eye twitch you know when someone in the movies is about to go insane their eye starts twitching drew legitimately told me over instagram dms which is how he sent me the the story so follow my instagram in the description but also submit stories there i'm gonna have an email up very soon sorry for the delay give me a couple days guys but anyways right Drew has this eye twitch, and he's just looking at him, and he's about to go completely insane all over the emo kid. And he looks at the emo kid, and Drew says to him, no. In fact, I will not be giving you any of my ice cream. And Drew's aunt is like, <gasps> and Drew's mom in his head, and Drew, Drew's mom doesn't really react, but she's like, all right, finally, my son is standing up to this weirdo kid who happens to be my cousin. I don't even care at this, or my son's cousin. I don't even care at this point, right? And Drew's like, yeah, I'm not eating, giving you any of my ice cream. And Drew takes a massive bite. And the emo kid says, peasant, you will be punished either way for being, for disrespecting my authority. But I will give you a chance to give me the ice cream before you get smited. And Drew's like, all right, bro, smite me. Yeah, smi uh, have you ever sm smited anyone before? I don't know if that's the correct past tense. Have you, ever, have, have you ever smited anyone before, bro? I didn't think so. So yeah, go ahead and smite me. And the emo kid is like, very well. And he stands up from his table and he goes, yeah! and like stretches out both of his hands to do like Sith Force, force Lightning or something. Nothing happens. And Drew's like, <laughs> all right, try again, bro. And he's like, he stands up, like stretches out his hands. And once again, right, nothing happens. And the emo kid's like, Peasant, I was giving you mercy, which is something I rarely give out. Give me the ice cream or you'll be smited for real. And Drew's like, all right, bro, smite me for real then. And the emo kid starts getting angry. And he's like, I was generous. I was kind. And you, you disgusting little peasant, you don't understand what you did. And the emo kid takes... He goes over, reaches over, grabs Drew's bowl of ice cream, and chucks it across the room, and is like, if I can't have it, nobody can. And Drew's like, all right, man, I'm done. And he gets up, and he looks at his mom. He's like, mom, we're going. And Drew's mom, instead of being like, oh, no, just stay. We haven't seen your cousin, and you're on in so long. Is like, all right, bet. And turns to, like, turns to her, uh, Drew's aunt slash her sister. He's like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, we got to go. I forgot. And, you know... Drew's aunt is kind of just like, yeah, I get it, man. And Drew's cousin, the emo kid who thinks he's a god, is like, no, no, you will pay. I'm going to put a spell on you. Put a spell on you? What? So Drew walks out of the restaurant with his mom, and they get into the car, and Drew's like, mom, 
Can we not hang out with my cousin anytime soon, or at least until he's done with his god phase? I don't care about his emo phase, if I'm being honest, but can we at least wait till he's done with his god emo phase? And Drew's mom is like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that was a terrible experience. Today we got a story of probably the cringiest emo kid on planet Earth. Uh, this is probably one of the craziest stories I've received in a long time. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber who sent in this story, let's call him Logan. So Logan was in the seventh grade when this all went down, and in Logan's class there was an emo guy and an emo girl. Yes, I'm in love with an emo girl type emo girl. Um, uh, and I'm just gonna call them emo girl and emo guy, because you guys know if I have like a billion names for people, I swap them. And even if I have one name, I've even messed that up once before. My brain is very small. But this all happened one day when the emo girl and the emo guy were at recess together. And basically like Logan had recess for a very long time. I know a lot of people don't have recess past like fifth grade, but Logan Logan had it all the way through ninth grade, which is pretty cool. So basically, right, the emo guy and the emo girl every single day at recess would sit at this bench, which kind of was like close enough to everyone else, but also far enough that they weren't gonna like get, I don't know, hit by someone on the swing or have to like interact with people. And basically what they would do is they would sit on the bench together and they would be in each other's arms and they would be like, society, no, no, but they would be like randomly cussing out kids and like literally some kid would walk by, let's call the kid Ben, or, Little little Ben over here, little Benny boy would walk by the emo girl and the emo guy, right? I'm just gonna call them the emo couple. And the emo couple would be like, oh, look at that Ben. He's such like a conformer to society. He's such a sheeple. He's the sheep and sheeple, bro. Like he doesn't understand our suffering. He doesn't understand how society treats us because uh, society hates the emo kids. Uh, and, and Ben would walk by and like he'd be able to hear all this nonsense he'd be like bro I can hear you and they'd be like oh what is that sheeple and sometimes they would just like get really like aggro and cuss people out they'd be like hey Ben and he's like yeah you suck bro and Ben's like all right, no one likes you guys. And they're like, eh, society keeps hating on us, bro. Why do you think society hates you so much? If you're sending hate out, you're getting hate back at the end of the day. But this all happened one day when Logan made the mistake of getting too close to the emo guy and the emo girl. So the emo couple was sitting on their little bench, right? And they were just like, shush, as always. And sure enough, you know, Logan, you know, he sees his friends at the tetherball. I don't know if you guys ever played tetherball back in middle school, but that was the most fun game ever. I would legit play it if I had it in my backyard right now. But his friends were over at the tetherball and Logan was walking over. And Logan could either take the long route, having to go around the basketball court, to the tether ball, or he could pass by on the short route, he'd have to pass by the emo bench, as I'm gonna call it, because that's where the emo guy and the emo girl would always sit every single recess and complain about shashade or whatever. And so sure enough, right, Logan just, you know, you know, he just, he doesn't know like the real deal with the emo kid and the emo girl, and he doesn't want to take the long route. So he decides that he's gonna pass by the emo bench. And he passes by the emo bench, and the emo kid is like, because he gets kind of close to them because, I don't know, he's paying attention. He's just walking. And the emo kid or the emo guy, I should specify, is like, hey, hey, man, wait a second. And Logan turns around and is like, oh, it's that weird emo-looking guy, like, whatever. By the way, if you dress emo, I, I really don't care. Like, you can do whatever you want, man. You're good in my book. Just don't act like these kids and we're chilling, bro. But anyways, Logan's like, oh, it's these kids. Like, I know they're kind of weird or whatever. And the emo guy's like, dude... I saw that you were looking at my girl, and Logan's like, bro, what are you talking about? And the emo kid's like, bro, bro, it's obvious. You're in love with my girlfriend. And Logan's like, dude, what, seriously, what are you even talking about? He's like, don't try and deny it, bro. You're only going to get into more trouble from me. And like the emo kid looks over at his girlfriend, and the emo girl's like, oh, you're my big defender against this guy in Shishidi. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I can't do the story with a straight face. So Logan politely explains to the emo guy that he has no interest 
and his girlfriend. And he's not saying, oh, she's ugly, lol. He's just like, dude, I was literally just passing by. Why would you think that like I have any interest in her? Like, why would I, why would that give off the impression that I want to like get with your girl? Like why, why on earth would that give off that impression? And so the emo guy is starting to realize that he was overreacting and that, you know, Logan was literally just passing by. But the emo guy uh, starts to have come up with a different theory in his head. And he's like, man, wait a minute. Are you calling my girlfriend ugly? And Logan's like, bro, no, like she's totally fine looking. Like, so, and then he's like, so you want to, you're in love with my girlfriend? And Logan's like, no, bro, I'm not. I'm trying to go play tetherball with my friends. And the emo kid is like, so you disrespected my girl. Turns over to his girl, gets a little wink. You're hot, beautiful. She's like, oh, so shiny. <laughs> and he turns back, <laughs> he turns back around and he's like, that's it. I don't stand for this type of disrespect and slander against my emo girlfriend because I'm in love with an emo girl. You and I, we're going to fight tomorrow for her honor and respect. And Logan's like, D what? And the emo kid's like, yeah, bro, we're going to fight. You and me at recess at this time, it's you versus me. I don't want to see you chicken out because I'll find you either way. And Logan's like, all right, bro, whatever. I'm going to go play some tetherball. Logan thought that that was it. Logan thought the emo kid was just being like, I don't know, overreacting just to like impress his girlfriend. But unfortunately, he was wrong. Real quick comment emo down below if you want to heart on your comment. I'll try and heart as many comments that say emo as possible as that is the secret word of the day. And by the way, if you really do want to support the channel, uh, Binge watch a bunch of my videos. I got playlists or just watch videos in the recommended from me. It really helps the channel and please leave a comment telling me that you're doing it so I can personally thank you. Recently, I've also been getting a lot of comments of people saying that they put on my videos to go to sleep, which I don't know if that's an insult or a good thing, but either way, like, here's the thing, man. Watch time is watch time and it supports the channel. So look, I'm not saying to put on a playlist of my videos turn the volume down to 1% while you're sleeping to boost the channel, but I'm also not saying to not do that, wink. Anyways, back to the story. So anyways, right, the next day rolls around and Logan doesn't think anything of it. Yes, in the back of his mind, he's thinking about the crazy experience of when he passed the emo kid bench, but he doesn't really think anything of it and he really doesn't think that the emo guy is going to, I don't know, <laughs> Oh my god, I got hiccups. But he doesn't think the emo kid is actually gonna do anything, man. Like, he's just like, okay, whatever. He's just trying to impress his emo girl. So, like, whatever, bro. Like, it really doesn't matter. And, uh, anyways, the next day rolls around, and it's recess. And sure enough, you know, Logan goes out once again to go to the tetherball, because that's where the boys were at. And he, I mean, he had a great day at tetherball the day before. That is a really fun game. I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I just really enjoyed it as a kid. But anyways, Logan goes over and he's just planning on walking to the tetherball having a good time with his friends but you know who's standing there blocking his way um yeah it's the emo guy and the emo girl is sitting on the bench and she's looking at her emo boyfriend uh right and but the emo boyfriend is standing there he's like yo do you remember when you disrespected my emo girl and uh logan's like what and the boyfriend takes out like, you know, there's like at the Halloween decoration stores, those big like foam fake skull swords. It's like the big gray swords that are made of foam and super bendy, but have like the skulls on them or whatever. So the emo kid must have bought one of those or had one of those already because he whips one of those out. And he's just like, it is time to battle, man. And L Logan's just like, bruh, like what? Uh, man, I'm just. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to play some tetherball, bro. Like, uh, I don't know about you, but, and he's like, no, you disrespected my emo girl. Like, <laughs> so sure enough, right? The emo kid or the emo guy should be specific is like, and you will pay the price. And he runs in against Logan and he takes the foam sword. 
He starts like going whap, 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 whap. Just starts like beating him with the with the foam sword. But bro, it's a foam sword. It literally bends on impact. So when he hits him, right, the sword just bends in half, right? It just kind of whaps around. However, he's kind of whapping it pretty hard. He's like pop, 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 pop. So it's like almost like slapping him. And sure enough, Logan's getting kind of little red marks. It's like if someone was like... You know, they're slapping you. I slap my knee, by the way. Don't be weird. Uh, <laughs> if someone's, like, slapping you, they might leave, like, some red marks. They're not going to do any actual damage, though, unless you're in a professional slapping contest and your head explodes or something. But, yeah, sure enough, the teacher saw that and is like, hey, hey, you there, stop that. And, you know, the emo kid's like, dude, this guy started it first. And the teacher's like, no, 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 I saw the whole thing. You just came up to this kid and you were just slapping him. Go to the principal's office. You have detention for the rest of recess. And the emo kid looks at Logan and is like, this is not over, man. This is not over. A week goes by and nothing happens to Logan. The, I mean, Logan kind of purposely avoids the emo bench. And he does look over and he sees the emo boyfriend and the emo girlfriend all cuddled up, cursing out society, as always, right? And uh, sure enough, right, he just thinks he's done. Uh, Logan thinks he's, he's in the clear, that the emo kid has stopped his nonsense, but no. No, 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 wrong. The emo kid has not stopped his nonsense. It's about to get much worse, believe it or not. So sure enough, a week goes by, and during that week, nothing happens. So Logan literally forgets entirely about the whole emo kid, whatever, disrespecting his emo girl type thing. He just doesn't even, like, think about it. Like, at the end of the day, he's just like, all right, whatever, man. I'm going to go play some tetherball, go hang out with my friends, play some, like, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I don't know, whatever they do at recess. Uh, but... One day, a week later, you know, Logan walks into school and Logan has a couple classes before recess. And Logan is just in the hallway and this big, like, emo looking kid who he has never seen before walks up to him. It's like, hey, I'm the emo kid's cousin and I'm gonna beat you up. And Logan's like, oh my God, because this kid was massive. The emo kid was kind of built like me, like a spooky, scary skeleton. But this emo kid, bro, he was like, he was like, I don't know. He was like a linebacker for like, I don't know, the Patriots, dude. He was a big guy. He was big guy for sure. And uh, Logan, uh, you know, Logan was pretty medium sized, but he was about to get obliterated by this guy if he actually did do anything. So Logan's like, what? And the, and the emo kid's cousin, who is also emo, he's like the emo, I'm just gonna call him the emo cousin, right? The emo cousin, who is super big, comes up to him and is like, you, me, boxing. <laughs> Logan's like, bro, am I supposed to be Logan Paul? Like, boxing? Huh? But sure enough, the emo kid's cousin is like, yeah, you, me, recess, boxing. This is for disrespecting my cousin's girlfriend. And he gives him a little shove. And Logan, like, feels the vibrations through his body as he kind of stumbles back a little bit. Kind of sizes it up and realizes, oh, my God, this is not going to end well. So Logan is kind of struggling to pay attention in class because he's kind of thinking about, you know, what's going to happen at recess. This big guy, the big emo cousin guy, said he was wanted to box him, whatever that even meant. But he was a little scared. I mean, he didn't think he was going to do that well if he actually did end up boxing this guy. Just because this guy was big and he was kind of medium big or he was kind of medium small, to be honest. So he was like, all right, man, I'm not going to do so hot. And Logan really knew that he was in trouble when he walked out, like, kind of like, because he walks out of the building to go to recess as he's trying to avoid the whole thing and maybe hang out with his friends instead. And normally people are kind of like, I don't know, dispersed around. Some are at the swing, some are playing basketball, some are at the tetherball, some are at the emo bench, you know, whatever, right? But at this point, they were all huddled around. And when Logan walked out, they all turned to look at him. And Logan just knew at that point on that things were about to be, they were about to be pretty bad, if he's being honest. So Logan kind of just walks out there, and the crowd that's kind of circled around that was looking at him kind of steps to the side to show the emo girl 
the emo guy and the emo guy's big emo cousin all standing there. Apparently word got out that there was going to be a big boxing match or whatever. And here's the thing, right? Stuff like this never happens at Logan's school. So when people heard that this was potentially going to happen, everyone was like, all right, man, the basketball, the tether ball, the, I don't know, the swinging, that can all be on hold because that can happen any day. But a boxing match between this kid and this big like emo guy who's like, doesn't even go here. This is not something that happens every single day. So sure enough, right, they were tuning in. They wanted to see what happened. And the emo kid is like, or the emo guy's like, oh my god, Logan, are you ready to get on for disrespecting my girlfriend, my emo girl? And Logan's like, bro, like, I didn't even say anything. And the cousin's like, yeah, you're just saying that because you're scared. Everyone's like, <laughs> okay, not everyone was laughing. It was literally just the emo kids. But at the end of the day, right, everyone was still watching. And so the, uh, you know, anyways, uh, the emo guy, like, has, like, takes out his backpack, who, which, because, like, normally you didn't bring your backpack to recess, but for some reason, the emo guy brought his backpack to recess. So, you know, that was a little confusing. And yeah, so sure enough, you know, he opens up his backpack and he takes out two pairs of boxing gloves. And Logan's just like, oh, so, so we're actually, so we're actually doing this. Oh, okay. So this is actually something that's go- Oh, oh, mm, mm, okay. Huh? So Logan, like, starts to put on the boxing gloves and is kind of, like, in his head, what am I doing? If I go along with this, I'm gonna get, like, I'm gonna get destroyed. So Logan, midway through putting on the boxing gloves, is like, wait, I didn't agree to do this. He starts taking off the boxing gloves, and the emo cousin is like, well, then I'm gonna fight you either way. If we do this officially, it'll be a fair fight. If you try and run away like a little weasel rat boy, then I'm just gonna come after you either way. So you got no choice. And at this point, Logan, like, is actually really concerned. Like, the whole thing was kind of a joke, and it was becoming less and less of a joke up to this point. But at that moment, he realized kind of how serious the situation is. Just a little word of advice for me. Don't get into any, like, fights at school. Just uh, please, for the love of God, avoid all that stuff like the plague. If it's happening, just report it. Just get away from that stuff. But anyways, Logan's like, oh, God, like, this is really bad. And he was starting to get pretty nervous. And that's when kind of his, that's kind of when, like, his guardian angel came, in a sense, because... This, uh, uh, the school principal, two teachers, and six security guards, the entire security guard force at the school came in, people started dispersing, they started running away, the teachers pointed at all three of the emo kids, they also pointed at Logan, and the security guards kind of like, didn't like apprehend them, they didn't like tase them and tackle them to the ground or anything, but they're kind of like, you four, you gotta come with me. And the emo kid's cousin's like, I don't even go here. And the security guard's like, yeah, you still got to come with us. And he's like, no, I don't. And they're like, we'll legit call the police on you if you try and leave. Like, don't even try. He's like, okay, whatever, man. So sure enough, all four of them, they were sent to the principal's office. And the principal and all the security guards were sitting around, kind of sat them down, and kind of just wanted an explanation of what happened. So the emo kids explained from their perspective, and then Logan explained from his perspective, and obviously his perspective is the perspective I just told. And apparently the emo kids' perspective was the same thing, but a little bit more dramatic of, like, Logan disrespecting the girlfriend or whatever. But honestly, the stories were practically the same, which is a little weird. Like, why would the emo kids say exactly what was happening when obviously they were in the wrong apparently they didn't realize how dumb they were being but uh yeah sure enough the principal's like wow that's insane so you might be thinking to yourself how on earth did they get an entire like security task force and all the teachers and the principals together when they were only out there for like five minutes well apparently since word spread of this quote-unquote boxing match that word spread like it spread to the principal and they took it very seriously so they had an entire team ready and they were monitoring the situation very closely to see if anything was going to happen and obviously if some kid comes from out of school to like try and attack another student of of course, they're going to have an issue with that. So what happened was 
Logan, since he was totally like in the right, you know, he was set free. He was totally fine. But the e and so was the emo girl because she was kind of just a bystander, even if she did cheer it on. You could say the same for Logan for not standing up earlier. So those two were totally fine. But the emo guy, he was suspended for an entire week since he kind of orchestrated the whole thing. And the emo cousin, like, the emo cousin couldn't be suspended or expelled because he didn't go to the school. But basically what happens is they ended up actually calling the legitimate police about this whole thing, explaining what happened, and the police ordered kind of like a semi-restraining order. I don't know if it was super official, but basically it said if this big emo cousin ever stepped foot on the school again, he would be, like, trespassing, and the police would have their rights to come and arrest him or whatever. So yeah... What even happened? Today we got a story of these emo kids who think that they're super hard, super cool, super tough, and then they get completely owned, and it's, com it's hilarious. You'll enjoy it. Subscribe if you like stories, drop a like, and let's call the subscriber who sent in today's story, let's call him Gavin. So this whole story, this like two week long epic saga basically, all started one day when Gavin was in the hallways of his school and he was just going to his locker because he needed to go grab his backpack because it was time for the first class of the day. So Gavin is walking to his locker and to be fair, right, he does say that he's not really paying attention, you know, he's kind of just thinking about other things and he bumps into this kid by accident. And this kid is dressed in like all black, has like super long black, dyed hair, has like black mascara, has some like band t-shirt that they definitely don't know more than one song, and the one song is the most played song, you know how it is. Uh, it basically, like, he bumps into this random emo kid, and by the way, if this is your style, I don't really care, like, you're totally chill in my book, as long as you don't do what these emo kids do in this video or this story, then you're totally cool in my book. But anyways, right, the emo kid who he bumped into is like, bro, you gotta be watching where you're going. And Gavin's like, all right, my fault. Like, yeah, I wasn't really paying attention. That's on me. And the emo kid says, that's not enough of an apology. I need you to bow down. And Gavin's like, dude, I'm not bowing down to you. Are you crazy? And the emo kid's like, did you just call me crazy? Did you? And Gavin's like, well, yeah, like, I'm so sorry for bumping into you. Like, Sure, this is kind of on me, but I'm not going to bow down to you to try and get your apology. And he's like, you don't know what you just did. And he like does a sonic dash away. Like, you know how like the sonic dash where you like throw both your arms back and like zoom away. And, uh, you know, Gavin honestly didn't think anything of it. He was like, all right, like. I've, I've never seen this kid before, but uh, I definitely, well, will probably try not to talk to him ever again because he's pretty weird. Um, but yeah, Gavin didn't think anything of it, but let me just say that quite a bit happened after that point. So fast forward a couple days and Gavin and his friend uh, or his friends after school, they went to this kind of like local ice cream place where they would go like maybe once or maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. They sat down after school, got some ice cream and just kind of like talked about the day, talked about whatever that the, they were interested in. I don't really know. But anyways, they were sitting in a booth and, you know, Gavin was actually he was actually recounting the story of the random emo kid that he bumped into because like, you know, he hadn't seen his friend in like a week or two as these friends were not school friends they were outside of school friends they went to other places but they were all close enough to congregate in the same ice cream place and so enough there is or sure enough they were like oh that dude that's absolutely crazy and as gavin was like finishing up that story he hears the doorbell open because there's like a bell in the door and in walks three emo kids however they're not the emo kid that gavin bumped into um so gavin doesn't think anything of it he's like oh speak of the devil and like the other guys that gavin is with gavin's friends they turn around and they're like dude are, is one of those emo guys like or one of those guys, like the guy that you bumped into, and Gavin's like, no, 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 that, like, I just thought it was funny that a bunch of, like, you know, people who dress like the guy who, who I bumped into, like, walked in as I was telling the story, but no, that's not the guy, or at least I'm pretty sure it's not, unless he, like, totally revamped his style and, like, looks totally different because of makeup or something, but he was pretty sure it wasn't. 
But weirdly enough, right, the emo kids walk right by, like, the front desk, right, or the place where you order the ice cream. And they weren't sitting at any of the open tables, as it was kind of like you'd seat yourself. They were walking right towards Gavin and his friends. So Gavin's like, all right, wait, hold up. Uh, these kids seem to be walking towards us. Do you guys know any of them? And Gavin's friends once again turn around and look closer, and they, they're, they're just thinking to themselves, no. So they tell Gavin, like, no, we don't know these guys. And Gavin's like, well, it looks like we're about to know them. And sure enough, the three emo kids walk up and they're like, are you like the guy who bumped into one of our brothers yesterday? And Gavin is just looking at them like, huh? And Gavin was like, uh, what are you talking about, dude? And he's like, you know, yeah, no, this is definitely the one. One of the emo kids turns to the other guy and says that. And they're like, all right, bro, you were definitely the guy who bumped into brother i don't know snake lord they get, <laughs> dude there's some like really weird name some kind of like derpy name or something they're like yeah this this is the guy who, who bumped into brother snake lord a couple days ago and then they all turn to gavin and they're like this is your final warning this is emo squad turf and gavin you know probably should have done this well, I mean, it doesn't matter, but he bursts out laughing. He was like, yo, it's whose turf, dude? What? And they're like, this is not a laughing matter. This is the second offense against Emo Squad. He's like, Emo what? Lol. And at this point, right, Gavin, he just can't stop laughing. He's like, so you're telling me, you're telling me that the guy I bumped you into, his name is Lord Snake Lord. <laughs> what brother snake lord and that you guys are part of emo squad and they're like it's not a laughing matter stop laughing stop it nah real quick before i forget because i keep on forgetting and it's annoying me right a uh, comment emo down below if you made it this far into the video it's the secret word and i try my best to heart as many comments to say that as a way to say thank you and by the way if you want to support the channel and help me get to 500k a little bit faster Binge watch videos. There's playlists in the description. I literally appreciate that so much. Anyways, back to the story. And Gavin's like, you can't be serious, dude. <laughs> and the emo kids are like, this is your last warning. Apologize to us. On your knees. Apologize to us while bowing down. Or you will suffer the consequences. You will faith face the wrath of emo squad. And Gavin's like, I'll face the wrath of what? Emo squad? LOL! So anyways, right, the emo kids are like, fine, you've sealed your fate. And the three of them walk out. And at this point, right, Gavin's friends also kind of join him and like laughing at this. They weren't laughing at the time because they were holding it in much better than Gavin was. But Gavin really at this point just did not care. Uh, uh, fast forward to the next day, though. Goes to school, goes to his locker, as always, is just trying to pick up his backpack. And, uh, you know, he sees that his locker has been opened. And he's like, okay, this is a little weird. And he opens up his locker, and he sees a piece of paper. And he's like, all right, this piece of paper definitely was not here before. It looks like it's, you know, intentionally in here. It was, like, folded up, and it was like, it, it, it would look like a note. So he picks it up, and he opens it up. And, the, the, like, the, the letter is, like, written in red pen to be all spooky and mysterious. And it says, you have disrespected emo squad for the last time you now you shall now suffer the consequences and it was signed emo nation and gavin's like emo nation <laughs> but nothing happens for the rest of the day so gavin was like pretty convinced that you know this was kind of a big bluff and that nothing actually would happen and but you know anyways right uh you know the next day rolls around and gavin has kind of completely forgotten about it and it's recess, and he's just chilling with his friends. He's actually on the swings. I used to love the swings when, like, I used to go out to recess back in the day. The swings, me and the boys would always be on those. It was fire. But anyways, though, right, he was just kind of chilling on the swings, and he sees this squad of six emo kids, or at least they're dressed up like emo kids. They walk up to him. And Gavin's thinking to himself, oh, my God, it's the... It, it, it's the Supreme Lord Emo Nation squad game forever. Hashtag bruh. Like it, it is. Oh no, guys, they're coming. And they walk up to him and they're like, so how's it feeling? And Gavin's like, bro, what? And, and they're like, you're totally scared right now. I can see through you. And Gavin's like, uh, scared of what? The, 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 the squad fam of Emo Nation. And they're like, no, the brotherhood. Don't disrespect the brotherhood. And Gavin's like, whatever, lol. 
And then one of the emo kids says, so are you ready for the attack? The great emo versus nerd war? And, 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 and look, Kevin's just like, wait, am I the nerd in this situation? They're like, yes, nerd. And he's like, I, right, bro, <laughs> okay, I'm ready for the great battle. Is it going to be greater than uh, World War One, Two, II, and Three combined? Is this going to be like D-Day, but a thousand times bigger and more epic and more explosions? And, and the emo kids, unironically, were like, yes, are you scared? And Gavin's like, no, law. and they're just like, you should be. And they all kind of run away, and they all like Sonic dash away. Apparently, like, the sign of the emo kids was like Sonic dashing away, which like, if you're trying to be intimidating, I don't know if Sonic dashing away is gonna really, like, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, you know what? I don't get it. Maybe I'm just a big old hater. Who knows, dude? Anyways, though, skip forward to Saturday, so two days later, nothing happens in the next two days. But sure enough, right, you know, Gavin and his friends, you know, they kind of congregate, and they're gonna go hang out at the park the, for that day. It was a really nice day out. I don't know, they were just trying to chill outside. But the thing is, right, as Gavin was walking and they were kind of like collecting all the guys or whatever, Gavin was noticing that, you know, there was this emo kid who was walking on the other side of the sidewalk. And he was like, okay, well, this is a little bit weird. And he notices that the emo kid is like looking at them and like looking away. His eyes are like darting back and forth. And then he picks out a phone and is like whispering into the phone. And Gavin is like, hey, because he tells he told his friends about what's been happening the last couple of days. He's like, by the way, we might be having some unexpected fun at the park or whatever is about to happen. And he kind of like points to the emo kid. And the emo kid is like runs away quickly. And so Gavin and his friends... They're walking to the park, and they just notice, like, random people dressed in all emo, like, randomly appear around them and kind of, like, look at them talking to phones. And Gavin's like, by the way, they said that they were going to have, like, an epic battle or something, so I, I guess prepare yourselves? So Gavin and his friends make it to the park, and they're, they're just walking in when they see, like, from the trees, from the bushes... 10 emo kids, 10, 11, 12, they all charge out, and they're like... This is the final battle. This will go down in the history books. And Gavin notices that they all have Nerf guns. And he's just like, oh my god, <laughs> no shot. And yeah, so they all walk out with these Nerf guns. And they're like, what are your final words? And Gavin turns to his friends. He's like, all right, so my fault. I realized that they were weird and cringe, but this is like... A whole new level, so my bad. We're gonna have a very weird day today. And they're like, uh, if those are the last words you've chosen, then so be it. And then they start shooting the Nerf guns at him, and like they just kind of like bounce off of him. But Gavin notices that all the Nerf guns were all the Nerf bullets were like colored black with like a black sharpie just to be even more edgy and emo and like, oh my god, society or whatever, right? And Gavin's like, oh no these foam like pellets are slightly annoying no no but like he's just like guys can, can you stop this is kind of annoying and they're like i know that you would crumble i know that you would fail no mercy and they just come in they're still like shooting these like little foam black bullets or whatever and he's just like guys please this is getting annoying i'm just trying to chill at the park with my friends and they're like you shouldn't have disrespected emo squad then and he's like emo squad they're like no stop laughing and sure enough right they just keep shooting their nerf guns until they run out of bullets and then they're like huh looks like we won this battle and gavin's just literally standing there with a pile of like poorly drawn nerf bullets right and he's like what and they're like yeah you got so scared and Gavin's like, dude, what are you talking about? And they're like, we won this. And then they all like get up, like they get all their Nerf guns together and they're running away. And they're like, and Gavin could hear them yell, yeah, we just won. Let's report back to emo squad. <laughs> Gavin's like, I like, okay. <laughs> okay, man. Like this is really getting annoying, but I guess you won. Let's hope this is the end of it. But unfortunately it was not the end of it. Yeah, no, these, these kids are crazy, bro. So things start to get really, really weird one day, like a couple days later, when Gavin is just chilling in his room, he's on his phone, and he's actually on Instagram, he's just liking people's photos or whatever, just kind of like chilling out, and he gets a follow request 
from an account called emo underscore nation, like in a bunch of letters or whatever. I'm not going to give you the exact username as I wasn't even given the exact username. And apparently the account's deleted now or whatever. So like, unfortunately, we can't go look at the account ourselves and cringe and laugh or whatever. But sure enough, right, you know, the account DMs him and they, this is where things actually get kind of weird. They DM him a video and Gavin looks at the video, and the video is of Gavin sitting on his phone, liking photos on Instagram. So Gavin immediately gets up, he goes out, and he sees his window is open. There's no, his, like, his shades are not drawn. He runs out, like, looks at his window, and, you know, his yard is empty. But sure enough, like, maybe a couple minutes ago, or a couple, 20 minutes ago, or whatever, maybe even, like, 30 seconds ago, there was one of the emo kids who was recording him from his backyard looking into his window. At this point, right, Gavin's like, all right, that's weird. I'm starting to get weirded out. I know these kids are just cringe and lame, and all they're going to do is, like, cast spells on me and, like, say, society hates us. But still, I really don't like this invasion of privacy. So Gavin's thinking to himself, all right, so I'm just going to screw over all these kids, like, for messing with me at this point, and I know for a fact how I'm going to do it. So Gavin basically has a plan where he wants to get them to admit in writing who's doing this and just to like admit it so then he can report it to the principals and get them to stop doing anything. So Gavin like finds the account again, sends it a message, is like, bro, like I'm waving the white flag, I need to surrender, you guys are too powerful, but first I must know who is it in the emo squad. And of course the account is like, responds, ha 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 ha. I knew you would crumble. I knew you would fall. Kind of goes on this like, I don't know, this big old Shakespearean big like, oh, you have failed. We have won. Emo squad will reign supreme forever. And he's like, all right, like, yeah, I totally lose guys. You're so right. But can you tell me who did I lose to? I must know the names. And then uh, Gavin's like, it is only, it is a soldier's ar- honor to tell me who it is. He just made something up to make it sound like something that they had to tell him the names to be honorable or something. And the emo squad legitimately says the, the members of the emo squad are, and then legitimately just gives a list of names. And Gavin's like, wait, bro, you're serious? You're just gonna, like, you're just gonna self-report this hard to me? I, like, cool. I'll take it, dude. So then Gavin goes on to say, so it was you guys, the people you just listed, who, you know, recorded me in my house and uh, attacked me at the park and threatened me and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, yes, it was us. It is a soldier's honor to tell uh, you who it was. And at this point, Gavin's like, bro, I just made that up. But like, thanks for believing it, dude. Like, it's just going to make my life so much easier. And he's like, wow, you guys really have won. And they're like, we have won the battle, but not the war. We shall not stop until you understand the truth of how you've disrespected the emo squad. And Gavin at this point, right, you know, he's screen, he's like real, he's real careful to screen record the whole conversation, get screenshots, somehow back it up, because like you can unsend or delete Instagram DMs, you can also delete accounts or whatever. So after Gavin has gotten all the proof, he responds, lol, emo squad, such a nerd name, and then stops responding. And they say, ah, what? I thought you surrendered. Well, we're going to attack even harder now. You don't know what we're capable of. But apparently Emo Squad was also not sh- was not aware of what Gavin was capable of. Because the next day, Gavin goes to the principal and he's like, Hey, can I talk to you for a second? The principal's like, yeah, sure, what's up? And uh, Gavin tells the entire story of what happened. And she's like, what? And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I have names of exactly who is in Emo Squad. And the principal's like, Pfft. And Gavin's like, I know, but hold up, hold up. And shows her the video tells her about everything, and then shows her the proof, and she's like, wow, like, normally it's, like, we don't get evidence this, like, convincing, like, good job, like, actually, like, normally we would have taken your stuff seriously if you just came forward with the story, but the fact that you also got them to admit with a list of names, um, that's, that's pretty good, and, uh, sure enough, right, every guy that was, like, or everyone who was listed on the Emo Squad account was following the account, too, so it's pretty, it's, it was pretty clear they didn't just list random people, and yeah, sure enough, right, uh, um, Gavin goes to class, and he's sitting in class when he hears on the loudspeaker the list of names in the emo squad 
be, and then followed up by, can the following names like report to the principal's office and then the list of names in the email squad? And Gavin's just sitting there like, mm, what a coincidence. That totally wasn't me. And uh, yeah, so sure enough, right? Uh, everyone in the emo squad gets like, sus they don't get suspended, but they get detention right after school for the next two weeks. And also they're now placed on kind of thin ice, AKA if they do anything against Gavin at all, they will get actually suspended. And if they do anything again, they'll get like full on sus expelled. So the emo squad never really like messes with Gavin again, except this one time about a week later. So they'd been in like in school uh, detention for about a week. Uh, Gavin passes one of the emo kids and the emo kid looks at him and hisses at him and then walks away. Today I got a story of probably one of the craziest emo kids of all time, and I've told a lot of crazy stories, so strap in, uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber, uh, let's call her Luna. So Luna was a tennis player and was pretty good at tennis, and over the summer her mom sent Luna to a tennis camp, and this story starts pretty far through the tennis camp. So the tennis camp lasted about one week long, and on the last day, which was Friday, all the parents would come and they would watch kind of like a tennis tournament of all the kids who were playing and learning how to play and getting better during the week. There would be a big tournament. They would have like, I don't know, a fake little trophy thing. But the main important thing was that there was a big tournament at the end of the week and all the parents came to watch. So this story starts on that Thursday. So this is the day before the last day, which is the big event. And and uh, this, this uh, tennis camp took place at a college, so they had access to a college dining hall, and Luna and her two friends were walking, you know, to go try and find a table, and Luna's two friends said, oh, look over there, or one of Luna's friends said, oh, look over there, there's a table, so Luna's two other friends, you know, went over and sat down at the table, Luna said, I'll be right back, I'm gonna go get something, so Luna walks over to the dining hall, grabs something to eat, and is walking back. And while Luna's walking back, she's not really paying attention. Like, she's kind of like, I don't know, spacing out or looking on her phone, or for some reason, she's not paying full attention to her surroundings. So unfortunately, she bumps into this guy. And, you know, the guy had a tray of food, and the food, honestly, it wasn't even that bad. Like, the food... Sure, like a little bit got on his shirt, um, but it wasn't like the entire tray exploded all over his shirt and his clothes were soiled and ruined beyond repair. Like, yeah, dude, you got sprayed a little bit. That sucks, but it's time to move on. And Luna was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. And like, she's like, like, I'm so sorry. Like I wasn't paying attention. And this kid, you know, Luna's looking at this kid, and this kid is very clearly like an emo kid. And by the way, there's nothing wrong if you dress like goth or emo or whatever. It's a style, and I think a lot of my viewers have the style, and I don't personally do it myself. That isn't my style, but I rock with you if you do that. No hard feelings. However, if you're like this emo kid, bro, you, you gotta change some things in your life. That's all I'm saying. Because this emo kid looks at Luna, looks her dead in the eyes, and then takes out a book. And Luna's like, eh, what? And the emo kid, so he has this book in his hand, and Luna notices that there's, like, ancient hylogri uh, like hy hylogryphics? Hy Dude, my brain is not working right now. There's, like, ancient, like, letters and all these, like, symbols on the book. Basically, it looks like, like, a wizard or witch book or something. And Luna's thinking to herself, all right, there's no shot that, like, that's actually, like, a wizard book or something. And the emo kid reaches into his back pocket and takes out a wand. So he opens up the, like, the spell book, and he's waving his wand around. He's like, you have made a great enemy. You've made a great mistake bumping into me on purpose. And Luna's like, it wasn't on purpose, man. Like, I swear to you, like, I wasn't paying attention, and I apologize for that. I should have been paying attention. You're right. Like, that's on me. However, like, come on now. It was an accident. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what kind of nonsense doobly doop you're doing right now. But and he's like, silence, mortal. And he's like waving his wand around. He's like, hibbity bibbity bobbity boo. I put a sp something like super goofy, but like supposedly like. I don't know, wizard tongue or something. He's like, beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. I'm like, okay, bro, like, let's calm down now. And he's like, there, you've been cursed. And he slams the book shut with one hand, puts the wand back in his pocket, puts the book back into his backpack, which he was carrying around. Or I guess not a backpack. I guess it was like a tennis bag with a racket in it. And the emo kid walks off. And Luna is just standing there, just kind of like, what? <laughs> What just happened? Like, can we just have, like, a little pause and a rewind of what just happened here? 
Because I don't think that, like, I really understood what was going on because there's not a shot that that actually just happened. So Luna goes back to the table with her two friends, and her two friends are like, what took you so long? And Luna's like, well, I actually have a very interesting answer that I bet you guys were not expecting. So Luna tells them the story, and they're like, one of them, one of them was just like, oh my god, that's crazy. The other one was like, dude, like, I know that kid. Like, I saw, I, I was in a tennis group earlier this morning. We're practicing forehands. I know that kid. He was so weird, bro. He was all like, Sisha. okay, he did. Okay, he wasn't like the other emo kid, bro. Uh, I'm just playing around. But he was like, all like in the corner, hushed away. And when the coach like, get, like said to him, it was his turn. He kind of like looked up at him and flicked his long dark hair back kind of sighed and then like you know hit a forehand or something and they're like that kid was super weird but i had no idea that he was like that weird because there's a difference between being kind of weird and putting spells on people randomly like that's just who two different ballparks bro quick comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment that is the secret word of the day and i will do my best to heart as many comments as possible i'm still getting over some complications with the uh, uh the the wisdom teeth and that might take a couple days so please don't take it personally if i don't heart your comment do know i still really appreciate it and also shout out to all the people who've been binge watching my videos like going through and watching a ton of them either via the playlist or just through the recommended please let me know in the comment section when you're doing this so i can heart it and say thank you and just know that you're supporting the channel more than you can even imagine at this point i really appreciate it back to the story it gets crazy anyways right so the next day rolls around and remember that you know luna was at a tennis camp and on the last day which was the next day because this whole spell incident happened on a thursday and the last day was on a friday so it was friday it was the last day and it was only like a half day because the parents would come and pick you up by the end of it. But anyways, right, there was a big tennis tournament and all the parents came to watch. So it was a pretty big deal. And so everyone was sitting around on the tennis court um, and like the coach was standing at the very front. Everyone was sitting on the tennis court and he was reading off his list of like, all right, guys, like, thank you for all your hard work this week. And finally, it pays off. Just know that, you know, win or lose, like, you know, we just want to make sure you have a fun time and that, you know, I mean, there can only be one winner, so you, you, you can't take it that personally if you don't win. Uh, the most important thing is to, like, good sportsmanship and have a fun time. And anyways, let me read off the pairings. So the pairings were read off, and Luna had a first-round match where she played against another, some random guy or something, and she was better. She was probably one of the top 10 people at the camp. She didn't expect to win the tournament. I mean, the, the other people, there are, were some people that were much better than her, and maybe they're having a bad day or whatever, but Luna just wanted to you know, go out there, have some fun. So Luna's first-round match went down really well. She won 6-2, 6-3, which is pretty solid win if you guys know tennis. I used to play tennis a lot back in the day. That's why I can tell this story story so well, um, at least the tennis parts. Uh, but anyways, things get really interesting when Luna goes into her second round match. The second round match is against a familiar character that you guys may or may not remember from earlier in the story. Yes, Luna is playing the emo kid. And let me just say that Luna did not forget the emo kid, but very well the converse is true too, because the emo kid had not forgotten about Luna either. Which means... Yes, Luna and versus the emo kid are about to play after the emo kid put a spell on her. And uh, Luna's just looking at her opponent like, there's no way, there's, there's no way, man. Th there's no way. So anyways, right, you know, Luna, so uh, when, when you play tennis, you normally, like, you will warm up with your partner and then you'll get into playing. But basically, you both stand on two sides of a net, just very quickly for people who don't know. And so Luna was standing on one side of the, the net and the emo kid was, like, sulking over and kind of, like, was all hunched over and kind of, like, wandered over to the other side of the net. And so Luna walks up to kind of, like, the net in, the, in between and the, the emo kid walks up as well. And Luna's like, all right, like, do you want to warm up and the emo kid is like eh. <laughs> insert maniacal laugh i can't do a maniacal laugh right now i'm just i just can't do it so insert like the most evil maniacal laugh from like tv shows and movies you can think of and dude out of all the responses luna was expecting okay luna was either responding expecting like yes or no it was a yes or no question but out of all the responses that Luna was expecting, let me just say that mani a, a maniacal laugh was not on the list, dude. Like, it just was not on the list. 
And so Luna's kind of thinking like, uh, okay. And then the emo kid goes on to say, huh, like finishes up his maniacal laugh and is like, why would I need to warm up when I have the curse on my side? And Luna was just like, oh, so so we're still going with that. We're not just going to like, because Luna was kind of thinking, all right, well, let's just put yesterday behind us because that was very weird. You know what? Luna, Luna gave this guy, you know, the privilege of allowing, you know, just to put that behind them because normally that's not a thing you just put behind, right? The fact that like you got a spell put on you, normally you don't just forget about that. But Luna was like, oh, okay, so no warm up. And the emo kid said, yeah, well, I mean, I have the curse on my side. So why would I need to warm up anyways? And Luna was like, all right, fine. I really got to smack this kid. So Luna and the emo kid kind of go immediately into playing the match. And so Luna spins the racket. And sure enough, it is the emo kid's choice. So basically in the beginning of tennis, you spin like heads or tails. And if you get it right, you can choose to serve or have the other person serve. And the emo kid starts maniacally laughing. So once again, insert the like maniacal evil villain laugh after the racket is spun. And, uh, you know, Luna's just kind of looking at him like, dude, what? And the emo kid is like, looks like my curse is already working. <laughs> Insert again, another maniacal laugh. And Luna's just thinking to herself, all right, bro, like, let's not jump to conclusions. There's a 50-50 chance that you were going to get that. Like, come on now. In the back of Luna's mind, she was like, uh, well... I wonder if the curse is real, but her rational mind was able to take control and be like, all right, let's just smack this kid. I know I'm better than him. So sure enough, right, you know, the emo kid starts serving. Basically, that's the way you start a tennis point. So the emo kid throws it up, bops it in, and the serve is not that good. I'm, serve is the hardest part of tennis, in my opinion, but the serve is not that good. And Luna, really wanting to have a good impression to kind of quote unquote break the curse, winds up a massive forehand, completely crunches it, and obliterates the emo kid in the first point. Like this ball is blazing off of Luna's racket and just smack right past the emo kid. The emo kid wasn't even like the curse was the emo kid plus the curse were not good enough to give him the reaction time to be able to deal with it. That's how bad this whole thing was, dude. So Luna looks up at the emo kid, giving her the dirtiest look ever, because I don't think the emo kid realized that Luna was one of the top players at the uh, at the tennis camp, but he now he now realized that, you know, he was probably not going to win this. I think he walked in with a lot of current confidence, also trying to scare her off because of like he remembered, oh, this is the girl I put the curse on. Odds are he would have like, if this was a different person, he would have put a curse on them beforehand. Like he would have walked up to the tennis net, whipped out his magic wand and been like, up, you're now cursed or something just to mess with their head. But since he's, he's already done that, right? He was trying to like, he was trying to use that as leverage. But anyways, the match continues and the emo kid is getting destroyed. So at this point, the emo kid is down about 3-0 and they're only playing one set. Basically in tennis, you play six, like you play to six games, whoever gets the six games first by win by two wins. And if you get to six, six, uh, you play a tiebreaker. But anyways, right, Luna's up three zero. So absolutely smoking the emo kid. And it's Luna's serve and she serves it in and it is very clearly a winning shot. However, it was close, right? It wasn't like, it was clearly in, but it wasn't like in by so far that like, you'd have to be like crazy to say that it was out, right? And the emo kid was like, out. Because if you don't know, uh, you, you make your own calls when you play tennis. There's no umpire unless you're really good. And this was a lower level. I think in the final match, like the final match of their big tournament, they might have like someone like officiating it. But the emo kid was like, out. And Luna kind of looked at him like, no, dude, that wasn't. But like, she can't really do anything. So they keep playing, right? And uh, Luna continues to crush this kid. Con con continues to crush this fool, bro. Like, and the, e the emo kid continues to cheat. However, the emo kid is really only cheating when it's like, uh, I don't know, kind of close. So if like Luna hits a really good shot, but it's kind of close, the emo kid will just call it out. And this is super frustrating to Luna because she's losing a lot more points than she needs to, but she's still winning. It's currently 5-1. So if Luna wins one more game, then it's over, right? She wins the match and like it's done with the emo kid. And at this point, right, I think other matches were kind of like 
getting on with and like there were like more people were finishing. So parents were kind of like coming over and they were watching and like more of the staff officials decided to watch this game just because less matches were being played because more people were winning and losing and kind of less matches were going on. So at this point, right, it was like 5-1 Luna and there were a bunch of people watching at this point. And so Luna hits a shot that is very clearly a forehand winner. She hits it, smacks it. It's not even like the other ones that is kind of close. This one was so clearly in, it was in by like two or three feet. And the emo kid is like, uh, that was out by the way. And Luna's like, dude, like I've been letting you have some really close calls recently, but that was so clearly in, I don't know how else to say it. Like I give you the benefit of the doubt of all the other stuff. But that one was so clearly in, I can't let it stand. Luna basically slips and she's like, nah, I'm done, bro. And the emo kid starts getting mad and he's like, hey, like you must respect my authority for point calling. And I guess technically you do. But then again, like one of the camp people was watching the whole thing go down and he started to pay more attention. So he's watching the emo kid and the emo kid is getting so angry. So once again, they start another point. The emo kid takes that point, even though he's obviously losing, right? And Luna hits another shot. And the emo kid, it's not even that Luna's shot was good. The emo kid just shanks it into the net. Like he completely misses it. And the emo kid was like, oh, by the way, your shot was so out. And it was so clearly in. And Luna's like, dude, you can't just call everything out when you lose. And at this point, the emo kid said, uh-uh, like, I'm going to do what I want because it's my authority and you have to deal with it. And at this point, right, the camp counselor had kind of noticed what was going on and was like, I, right, I, right, I got to come in here. I got to put a stop to this. So the camp counselor, you know, starts to walk on the court and is like, what's going on, guys? And the emo kid is so angry at this point because he's losing and he's just mad. And what? oh my God, this is where the emo kid snaps. So the camp counselor is walking over to the emo kid and is like, all right, can you explain what's going on here? Like, it looked like that point was very clearly in. Why did you call it out? And when the, when the camp counselor says to the emo kid that it was clearly in and asked him, kind of questioned his call, the emo kid, already super salty and already molding super hard, being super angry already, just completely loses it. And he takes his racket and he goes, Rah! and he whips around and he smashes it into the camp counselor. And like the camp counselor stumbles back and it's like, oh my God. Cause like the racket had hit his arm. It had like broken the skin a little bit. So it was a little bloody and he, it wasn't that bad. He didn't break anything. He didn't like hit a major artery or something, but the racket smashed into the camp counselor and like kind of like broke into his skin. So the camp counselor starts yelling like, are you crazy? Like, why would you do that? I was literally asking about a call and you attacked me. And there was another camp counselor watching the whole thing and he starts walking in. But before they could do anything, you see this woman with a long, with kind of like a kind of like a side part, like it kind of like the Karen haircut. Maybe she was a nice woman, but I'm just describing what I was told. By the way, this story was sent into my Instagram. Go ahead and follow me there. It's in the description. Even if you don't want to send in the story, just follow me there. It makes me feel good. But anyways, this woman walks on the court. She kind of looks like a Karen. Maybe she's super nice. I'm just saying it how it is, right? Walks on, grabs the emo kid by the back of his, by like the scruff of his shirt and drags him away. And he's like, ma'am. He's like, he's like ma'am, I was winning. The emo kid literally had the audacity as he was being dragged off court for attacking one of the camp counselors to say that he was winning. What? Yeah, so the, the other camp counselor, I mean, the one that got hit with the rackets, like, uh, I got to get this checked up. Like, I think I'm fine, but, like, I just want to make sure that, like, it didn't break anything farther because his skin was kind of bloodied up. And the other camp counselor, the one that was not attacked by the emo kid, walked up and said, hey, Luna, like, sorry you had to deal with that. Uh, we're giving you the win, obviously. And so sure enough, Luna went on. Luna didn't win the tournament, but, you know, did pretty well. And the emo kid was nowhere to be seen after he's dragged off by his mom. Presumably, his mom was like, all right, like, we're done grabbed him and just dragged him off click on the video dude. on screen right now i know you'll enjoy it just click it do it